So if you beautiful people haven't heard, the YouTuber Yo Fellow Arab has been kidnapped in Haiti for 15 days now on a $600,000 ransom. And if you guys didn't know, you can Google Haiti's government and see that uh, they don't have one. Their entire country is literally turning into a Grand Theft Auto style wasteland, all being controlled by some fat retard named Barbecue. Make no mistake though, just because I think this guy is a fat idiot doesn't mean I'm booking a one way trip to Haiti. If I train for like a month, then yeah, I'd probably have the skills to kill every single one of those child soldiers he has working for him with my bare fucking hands. But luckily, if it ever came close for me to having to do that, our government would take him out faster than Boeing takes out a witness. Some people aren't that smart. Smart though, like our Arab friend here who decided to go to Haiti and try and meet up with the infamous condiment man himself, only to be kidnapped by another gang leader who is on the FBI's most wanted list. Now this wasn't something random where he's like, let's go to a place where the travel advisory has been at level 4 since July of last year. This is apparently what he's known for. He uploaded a video 3 months ago called Living with the Mexican Cartel, which should give you an idea of what kind of content he puts out. For the next 100 hours, I will be living with the most dangerous cartel in the entire world. Which he has only been doing for about a year. Before that, it was just basic travel vlogs, and then before that, it was Fortnite videos. Three years worth of Fortnite videos. But as of about a year ago, that's when he started doing these Vice type videos where he would just hang out with some of the worst people known to man in whatever country he's visiting for a couple of days, and then move on to the next country. In hindsight, you could say this was bound to happen, but when you're a YouTuber, hindsight doesn't hit till way after the consequences kick in. But I guess for his latest video, your fellow Arab was going to meet up with barbecue sauce. And what's funny is that around the time he was kidnapped, I told Tyler Oliveira to go and investigate this guy, which coincidentally has been taken over by some dude named Barbecue. That's a trillion view video idea. If only it was Tyler. But this was the last video posted by your fellow Arab at his hotel before the kidnapping occurred. So we actually cannot leave to Port-au-Prince until the morning because it's already 6 p.m. and if we leave right now, We'll get there while it's dark. It's about a six hour road trip. We'll get there while it's dark and that place is completely run by gangs. So you don't want to be dealing with the gangs even though we have safe passage, we're already approved. All it takes is one stupid gang member holding an AK-47 for one thing to go wrong. So we're not taking that risk at night. We're gonna be leaving at three in the morning. I just really wanted to show you guys the view from this hotel. We're the only people in this entire hotel. Everybody else is workers, employees, etc. Because no one's allowed into the fucking country. So there's no tourists here, okay, other than those Royal Caribbean guys. But I have the entire hotel to myself. Look at that view, man. You got the mountain range, you got the sun setting, okay, you have entire Cap Haitian over here. And we've got a pool, which I wasn't gonna take advantage of, but. How many times in your life are you the only person in an entire hotel because the country's completely shut down, no one should be coming in, and you're just a retarded YouTuber. Now just a retarded YouTuber is an understatement. There are red flags that pop up immediately throughout the video. The obvious one is that they're the only ones at the hotel. Unless you're a tourist visiting North Korea, that is never normal. The second one is that you can only travel during the day. This isn't fucking dying light, all right? If you can't explore a country when it gets dark, then you can politely fuck off. And the third red flag is just putting out this video because if you think a YouTuber being alone in a hotel is going to stay between the hotel staff, then you might be a super retarded YouTuber. I know for a fact, as soon as this dude was the only one to check into this hotel, that gang leader is one of his low level goons who works at the hotel, went back to him. He's like, hey boss, I know we can, we Actually, you know what, bleep that out. That's a joke for later in the video. But if we go back to Haiti's travel advisory information, other than having a big red banner that says do not travel to, if you just read the first line of their country summary, that would tell you everything you need to know. Kidnapping is widespread and victims regularly include US citizens. Kidnapping cases often involve ransom negotiations and US citizen victims have been physically harmed during kidnappings. Now I'm sure after he read this he's like, thank god I'm Arab or this could be a problem for me. But this isn't like Brazil or Africa who have access to outside resources to help you if you really needed it. 
like you do now. Haiti is a fucking island connected to a country where you need to exercise extreme caution. He's basically stuck between a rock and another rock that's just not as big. It also says don't display signs of wealth and staying at a beautiful resort saying you're a YouTuber falls under displaying your wealth. And the fact that they want 600,000 shows that they know you have money. The people who kidnapped him don't fuck around either. It says in October 2021 they kidnapped 17 people and held them at gunpoint for 61 days. This dude is only at a quarter of that. It also says that the leader has kidney problems which could be why he wants $600,000. I don't know how much a kidney is going for on the black market but 600,000 seems a little bit too specific. But then if you look up how much a kidney is it says it could be up to $130,000. And just to get that kidney into Haiti and then getting a doctor who isn't going to botch the surgery probably got him to that total of $600,000 after taxes. Part of me wants to say though that this is him just building up hype for his next video because this wouldn't be like a random video he uploads. Being kidnapped by Haiti's most dangerous criminal is a title he would use. It, it's a video he would make. What is kind of weird to me is that one of his friends apparently tweeted out that he in fact was kidnapped but he's also saying that he'll be out soon. But then this other YouTuber Lord Miles who is someone who makes videos spending time with the Taliban said that he was in contact with Arab through the kidnappers and that if we could help out in any way. What the fuck do you mean help? If you mean pay some of the ransom, you can kiss the hole that is my ass. He went there voluntarily. If it was like where he was there and then everything went down and he was trying to escape, maybe, but... He went there on his own free will. And if you don't want me to help that way, how am I supposed to help someone who was kidnapped by one of the FBI's most wanted? I'm not John fucking Wick, alright? If anyone tries to do something, they're just gonna end up as another hostage. And besides, he'll be out soon. What? Another tweet though that makes me even more suspicious that this is all hype for a new video is that Miles posted another tweet where he messaged Arab before his meeting with the Sauce King and he said, you going to the capital? And he's like, mm-hmm, if I don't get kidnapped before then. And then someone replies showing that he did in fact fake a kidnapping when he was in Brazil with I Show Speed. But then Lord Miles is like, well, his family contacted me, so I believe it's real. Oh, my bad. I didn't know Lord Miles was the fucking all-access negotiator. By the looks of it, Lord Miles seemed Seems to be the only one who can help being in direct contact with the people who kidnapped him. But no, let's ask us for help. Yeah, I'll bust out my fucking gold coins under my cement floor. The only real way I can see us helping is if we just give them counterfeit money. They're gonna exchange it for their stupid currency anyways. Or just get a good old American negotiator to mindfuck the shit out of this 28-year-old bozo. And then if worse comes to worse, why don't we just hit up this barbecue feller and ask him to help? At least his gang was allowing the Arab guy to interview him peacefully. All you gotta do is get these people to fight, and as they're killing each other, that's when we extract Arab and look back like nothing ever happened. And then when people ask, we're gonna be like, oh no, yeah, They've been like that since the earthquake. They have never recovered since the earthquake. The earthquake did all of that. Dead bodies, the, the bullet holes, the earthquake did that. The funniest thing to me about all this is that him going to Haiti during a time when the government is literally collapsing reminds me of this old dude when he gets asked what he does for fun. What do you do for fun? I mean, it sounds kind of macabre, but I like to go to uh, visit a country after a terrorist attack. Obviously, I hope nothing horrible happens to him, and if he gets out, I expect a video about this because there's no way in 2024 a gang leader is going to do all this with a YouTuber and not at least release some footage of what they got going on. Other than that, see you guys soon. Sunday. Peace.